We still don't know a whole lot about the all new Cybertruck, but we have seen some leaks and some tweets from Elon. So let's take a look. In this video, we're going to deep dive into the specs on the new Cybertruck, including weight, battery pack size, and range. So let's start with the original announcement in 2019. If you have seen that unveiling, it's pretty interesting and you'll probably know why. But they announced three different versions of the Cybertruck, a single motor, dual motor, and tri-motor. Since then, there's been information about replacing the tri-motor with a quad motor variant, and then they're soon going to follow that with just a dual motor variant. And back in 2019, Tesla is claiming a 500 plus mile range in the flagship model. So we're going to see what it'll take for this quad motor variant to achieve those targets. Before we deep dive into battery information and numbers, I just want to go over some really simple facts real quick. The Cybertruck is going to be built at their new Gigafactory in Austin, Texas. The car features a steel exoskeleton, so it's not a traditional body on frame design. And it'll also have the new 4680 cells and structural battery pack that they're putting into the Model Ys that are coming out of Texas. Cool, so I've set the stage with some basic info about the Cybertruck. Let's ask our first question, which is how much is this thing gonna weigh? They're talking about a steel exoskeleton, huge battery pack, 500 plus mile range. So I figured let's start with a simple overview of the current offerings on the market. I've created a really simple side-by-side -side comparison you can see on your screen. We have the Rivian R1T, the Hummer, and the Cybertruck. So if you look at the huge glaring metric it's the weight the Rivian weighs over 7,000 pounds and the Hummer weighs around 9,000 pounds so it's clear that EV trucks are extremely heavy let's find out where the Cybertruck might fall on this spectrum so the first method I'm using is a pretty conservative method I'm gonna take the Hummer and separate out the battery pack and what I'm calling the base weight of the truck so that's just the weight of the truck without the battery pack so the curb weight is 9,063 pounds the 209 kilowatt hour battery pack is 2,900 pounds that's about the same weight as a Honda Civic and so the weight without the battery pack is 6100 pounds and that's about the weight of an f-250 and we're talking about the car without the battery pack so the total weight of the Hummer is like a Honda Civic in an f-250 bed driving on the road this thing is not light so for the sake of this video we're gonna assume the quad motor variant Cybertruck has the same base weight as the Hummer, meaning if you take out the battery packs of both cars, they're equivalent in weight. I assume Tesla will be able to make a little bit lighter of a truck than this, but it's extremely unclear how much mass the steel exoskeleton carries, as well as some other features that they're talking about that'll definitely add weight. So now let's transition a bit and look at strictly battery pack weight. And to do that, let's first look at the Tesla 4680 cells. On the left of your screen is the 2170 cell currently found in the Model 3 and Model Y. You can see its dimensions there, 21 millimeter diameter, 70 millimeter height. Tesla has been in the works creating an all new cell design. It's a lot bigger and carries a lot more energy density. It's 80 millimeters in height and 46 millimeters in diameter, so about five times the volume. And Tesla's claiming a 16% increase in range and a 14% increase in energy density. The second big tech improvement that'll be going into the Cybertruck is the structural battery pack. I won't go into details here. You can check out some of my other videos or look at a great YouTube channel, The Limiting Factor, to understand this more. But Tesla's claiming a 10% reduction in vehicle mass and a 14% increase in range. Although when they did announce this, it was in the context of a Model Y, and a Model Y weighs around 2,000 kilograms, so a 10% vehicle mass would translate to about a 200 kilogram savings on a Model Y. So it's unclear how this would scale up to a bigger vehicle like the Cybertruck. So we're going to assume the 10% does not scale, and we're going to save 200 kilograms from this improvement. To calculate the weight of the battery pack, we're going to start at a cell level. So we're going to try to calculate the weight of all of the battery cells, and then we're going to scale that up to a pack level. I found a leak on Twitter of the current 2170 cell density, as well as the new 4680 cell densities. And so I have them on the screen here, but the 4680 in 2023 is supposed to have a capacity of 108 watt hours per cell. And that translates to an energy density of about 340 four watt hours per kilogram. So we're gonna assume that Tesla is using these 2023 4680 cells in the Cybertruck. Again, these numbers are not confirmed by Tesla, they are leaks, but they do seem pretty accurate to other calculations I've seen online, so we're gonna run with it. So if you look at a Model Y that's produced today with 2170 cells, the cell level energy density is 270 watt hours per kilogram, and the pack level energy density taken from the EPA is 180 watt hours per kilogram. The actual pack weight is 450 kilograms or a little bit under a thousand pounds. And so the actual weight that sells is only 67% of the overall pack weight. So in the most simple terms, I'm saying that about one third of the pack weight is not from battery cells. 
It's from other things like cooling, wiring, and packaging of the cells. And so even though Tesla might improve on this one thirds to two thirds ratio, we're gonna assume the worst and apply this to the Cybertruck. So to calculate the total pack weight, I promise we're getting there. It's just two simple steps. First, calculate the total weight of all of the cells and then apply the 67% or two thirds metric to get the pack weight. So let's start with 200 kilowatt hours as a starting point and let's see what this thing weighs. So the 4680 cell density is 304 watt hours per kilogram. We're talking about a 200 kilowatt hour capacity. Cell weight comes out to about 658 kilograms or 1450 pounds. And pack weight, when you apply the two thirds metric, you see that it's about 2,165 pounds or 982 kilograms. And so that's giving us a pack level energy density of about 204 watt hours per kilogram. So you can see on your screen here, I've calculated weights of battery packs from 200 kilowatt hours to 240 kilowatt hours. We're getting a total vehicle weight of about 7,800 pounds with a 200 kilowatt hour pack. And that's going all the way up to about 8,300 pounds with a 240 kilowatt hour pack. Some other bonus information I threw in is number of cells it'll take to actually create that capacity. So you can see it ranges from about 1900 cells to 2300 cells. Cool, so we now know the rough weight of the Cybertruck. That's gonna let us estimate the range, which is really cool. So how much battery do we need to achieve a 500 mile range? It's one of my original questions in the beginning of the video. To do that, we're gonna look at forces that act on the truck. So there's two forces that act on any car while they're driving down the road, air resistance and rolling resistance. If you've seen my videos before, you probably know this spiel, but you can see the formulas down below. We have air resistance, rolling resistance, and the power equation, power is equal to force times velocity. And so what we're gonna do is calculate range by finding all of the forces that act on the truck. If this is confusing, don't worry. I'm gonna run through an example that'll hopefully make it crystal clear. So we have our formulas that I just mentioned in the upper left. And in the upper right, we have our specifications. So coefficient of drag, I'm gonna estimate at 0.3 for the Cybertruck. This is a total estimate. It could be between 0.25 and 0.35. I'm not an expert on aerodynamics, so this is what I'm gonna use. And I'm basing it off a reference point of a Rivian R1T. The frontal area, I'm estimating at 85% of the width and height, and that comes out to be 3.28 square meters. The mass of the truck, which we just went through in a ton of detail, I'm using the 200 kilowatt hour version. So we're gonna use 3,564 kilograms and we're gonna include 100 kilograms for the driver and anything else that's in the truck. So using our formulas above, we can calculate power consumption at any speed. So power at any speed is equal to our air resistance plus our rolling resistance, all multiplied by how fast we're going. So let's do an example at 50 miles an hour. 50 miles an hour is 22.3 meters per second. If you plug in all the numbers into that equation, you can see that we need about 6.7 kilowatts to overcome air resistance, and we need about 8.03 kilowatts to overcome rolling resistance. So that means to overcome all forces at 50 miles an hour, we need 14.73 kilowatts of power. And since we know that our truck has a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack, you can just do some simple division and you can see that you could drive for about 13 and a half hours before you would fully drain that pack, assuming you started at 100% capacity. And since we're driving at 50 miles an hour, you can multiply that by the time you're driving and you see that you could do about 679 miles of driving. But this is all assuming 100% efficiency. When an EV drives down the road and puts power to the ground, there are various different losses that are going on. And so you have to apply an efficiency metric and typically modern EVs are somewhere around 80% battery to wheel efficiency. And so if you multiply our 679 mile range by 0.8 due to losses, we see that actual range comes out to 543 miles. What you see on your screen here is a graph of range versus battery size in the Cybertruck. And I've done it for three different drag coefficients. So on the top, the green line, it's 0.25 coefficient of drag, the middle line, 0.3 coefficient of drag, and the bottom line, 0.35 coefficient of drag. So there's a lot of things you're seeing here. The first one is how weight actually decreases range, how pack size increases range, and the last thing you're seeing is coefficient of drag has a massive impact on range. And these are all calculated at 50 miles an hour. If you up this to highway speeds, say 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, the coefficient of drag becomes a huge factor. And these lines will create a ton of separation vertically. 
Cool, so we walked through weight of the Cybertruck, we walked through range calculations, and we talked about battery capacity and how that impacts range and weight. Let's wrap up the video and talk about the conclusions we made. So the first one is that we need around a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack to achieve a 500 mile EPA rating. If you look back at the chart I just showed you, you can see that crossover point is right around the 200 kilowatt hour pack mark. But keep in mind that this was calculated at 50 miles an hour. So in real world conditions, you're gonna need more than a 200 kilowatt hour pack to go 500 miles. Probably the biggest unknown of the Cybertruck is the coefficient of drag. The shape is really unique and I'm not an expert on aerodynamics. So I gave you a big range of 0.25 to 0.35 but that's gonna have a huge impact on practical range in the real world. We saw a 90 mile decrease in range when increasing the coefficient of drag by 0.1, so that's extremely important. We know that the Tesla 4680 cells and the structural battery pack are incredible. It allows Tesla to pack in a ton more capacity without much of a weight penalty, and it's gonna be incredible to see these applied to vehicles in the future. And finally, we don't know everything about the Cybertruck. This is a video with a lot of hypotheticals. We could and probably will see Tesla improve on weight, aerodynamics, energy density of the batteries. So just keep that in mind with these calculations. These are meant to be rather conservative. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something about this. If you wanna see a recent video where I talk about the Model Y with the structural battery pack, you can check it out here. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.